There is good reason why the Samal is regarded as one of the finest off-road vehicle ranges in the world. An outstanding high mobility vehicle capable of negotiating all types of adverse terrain, the Samal's design is based on a concept from an acknowledged international leader in off-road vehicle technology and modified to suit the harshest conditions of the African bush. Small wonder, therefore, that it has been the South African military's vehicle of choice for the last 25 years. Although formal development of the Samal began in 1979, the vehicle's origins date back to 1974, when the Armaments Corporation conducted various feasibility studies on the incorporation of a higher percentage of local content in trucks used by the South African Defence Force. Arms Corps' intention was not only to increase South Africa's self-sufficiency in this regard, but also to ensure maximum logistic support benefits for the Defence Force's vehicles. Numerous vehicles were evaluated to establish operational parameters, and the Defence Force eventually decided to standardise on vehicles in the 2, 5 and 10 tonne classes, which would be manufactured by the private sector. Fifteen companies subsequently applied for the contract. Among them, Steelmobile Engineering, a member of the Messina Group, and General Motors. On its own initiative, Steelmobile had already acquired the technology and completed planning to significantly increase the local content of its own vehicles, and had also obtained manufacturing and distribution rights for the German Magiris Dietz truck. Negotiations between Arms Corps and Steelmobile began and in August 1977 Steelmobile signed a contract with Magiris Dietz for the local manufacture and delivery of 702 tonne, 503 5 tonne and 221 10 tonne vehicles. Arms Corps approved the purchase contract in December 1977. An additional contract was also signed with General Motors for the purchase of 807 three-ton diesel Bedfords. This figure was later reduced to 300, while the number of five-ton Magiris Dietz vehicles was increased by an additional 250. In November 1978, Steelmobile Engineering transferred all its rights and liabilities under the Arms Corps agreements to Truckmakers, a Sunlam subsidiary. At a meeting of the Arms Corps Board of Directors the following month, these formidable vehicles were renamed Samal 50 and Samal 100, an acronym for South African military. On April 5, 1979, Arms Corps signed a contract with truck makers for the manufacture of Samal vehicles. The contract was initially for five years, but eventually continued until the 31st of March 1989. Truck makers delivered the first 2,234 production vehicles in the 1978-79 financial year. On the 27th of April 1981, General Lemmer, then Chief of the Defence Force, requested Arms Corps to replace the existing Magiris Dietz air-cooled engines in the Samal 20 and 50 series with ADE water-cooled engines. The obligatory fitment of these engines led to the naming of the non-military version of the vehicle, the SA Magiris or Samark, a range of six-wheel drive, 4x4 and 6x4 trucks. Production of the new Samal Mark II series began in 1984. Truck makers delivered an average of 920 vehicles each year between 1979 and 1992. During this period, many variants of the sawmill were developed, including several mine-protected vehicles to counter the escalating landmine threat of the Bush War. Up until the middle 70s, the Army had used a Bedford truck fitted with a two-man mine-protected cab in its operations. This vehicle was known as the Zebra. The harsh terrain of the combat environment soon made it apparent 
that the zebra was incapable of meeting the army's high mobility requirements. Additionally, its four-ton payload was too low to transport cargo. In 1976, the then Director of Logistics, General Oersthuizen, instructed Arms Corps to develop and produce 62 mine-protected cabs for the Magiris Dietz vehicles. The contract was awarded to Wolf Engineering. In 1978, 42 cargo dropside and 20 fuel Bowser vehicles were delivered for operational use. They were known as the Querfuel Mark I cab. By now, the Sarmel range of vehicles was in full production, and the South African Army instructed Arms Corps to fit the Sarmel 100 with mine-protected cabs. This was subsequently done, and the new vehicle was named the Querfuel Mark II cab. About 120 of these units were built by Steel Corps Engineering. By 1978, the landmine threat had reached critical proportions. The military decided to move off-road in dense bush conditions, and the Querfuel Mark II was upgraded to the Mark IIA version. Bush protection kits for the chassis, developed and tested by Arms Corps, were also included in the Mark IIA. Querfuel cabs for the Sarmel 100 were produced and mounted on various chassis configurations, including the cargo, fuel bowser, the Tungs recovery, 36-man bus, and tipper variants. The same cab design was adopted on the Sarmel 50 Mark I chassis, and about 140 of these cabs were produced by Steel Corps Engineering. The cargo dropside, water tanker, and recovery vehicle were among the variants produced from this design. Various configurations of mine-protected vehicles were also developed and produced on the Sarmel 20 Mark I chassis. These included the Sarmel 20 Rhino and Sarmel 20 Bulldog for the Air Force. The Sarmel 20 Acefarg, fitted with a 20mm anti-aircraft gun system. The Quefuel prototype for the South African Army and production units for the civilian market. The Querfuel proved to be one of the safest mine-protected vehicles ever produced in the world, owing to its weight, height off the ground, and excellent cab design. It could withstand the simultaneous detonation of three TM-57 landmines, or the equivalent of 21 kilograms of TNT explosives anywhere below the cab. Because the Sarmel Querfuels were so well protected, Driving in the bush presented no problem. Many thousands of kilometers were covered across dense bush, under extremely high temperatures and in very soft sand. On many occasions, the payload on the Sarmel 100 Quefuel was more than 13 tons, especially when carrying ammunition and heavy food supplies. Yet these reliable workhorses never failed to deliver their cargo to the fighting forces on time. Three monocoque mine-resistant vehicles were also developed from the Sarmel range of components. The Sea Legs vehicle led to the production of nine electronic warfare vehicles, the Mferzi Ambulance, the Mferzi Command Vehicle, and Mferzi 6x6 were produced for the South African Medical Health Services while 16 Tapir 4x4 weapon platforms produced were later sold to a foreign client for humanitarian demining operations. The Sea Legs, Battleur, Rhino and Samuel 50 Quefuel were also successfully demonstrated in foreign countries. Arms Corps also developed bush protection kits for the Samuel 100 and Samuel 50 soft skin vehicles. Air, fuel and hydraulic lines were tucked into the chassis and bush bars and plastic fuel tanks were also fitted. These vehicles brought about significant cost savings during bush driving. There is no doubt that the mine protected variants on the Samuel range of vehicles saved many lives which ensured a high morale among the soldiers. 
the production of sawmill vehicles was terminated towards the end of 1992. Approximately 60 different variants had been derived from the sawmill, including the Samach and Sarcom non-military versions. No fewer than 16,864 Samil, Sarcom and Samach vehicles were built by truck makers. A further 585 were produced for civilian and other uses and sold by Arms Corps marketing. Roymek Sandok, which today is known as BAE Systems Land Systems OMC, acquired the military business from truck makers in 1994. All Samuel and related spares were moved to the company's Wadeville branch, from where the support and supply of spares for the Samuel fleet was conducted. In September 1998, OMC moved the support division to its Benoni site. Today, all support functions for the South African National Defence Forces Samuel fleet are managed from Benoni. The purchase of spares, deliveries and quality acceptance takes place at the OMC receiving area, after which all inspected material is transferred to stock. On receipt of an order, components are issued, packed and dispatched to destinations all over South Africa. The deployment of sawmill vehicles throughout the country resulted in a nationwide requirement for the supply of spares and the establishment of a dealer support network in areas where the vehicles were deployed. Following the end of the Bush War in 1990 and the return of substantial numbers of sawmills to South Africa, the requirement of support in other centers increased and the dealer network was expanded to cover the whole of South Africa. OMC is currently involved in the National Defence Forces Project PEPA and assists the Army support bases and associated units throughout the country in reconciling their stock levels, which will enable them to adjust to the proposed reduction of the Samil fleet over the next 10 years or so. Robust, reliable and tireless, the Samil range of vehicles has made an invaluable contribution to the South African National Defence Force. Its 25 years of service is an inspirational achievement.